horse riding is a little bit like life. And particularly when you think of those, you know, those quotes you see online about enjoying the journey and it not being just about the destination, except when it's the canter, because for so many riders actually getting into the canter, yeah, not all that enjoyable at all. And today I want to talk about how you can make this a little bit more successful, more enjoyable, more just everything for you and your horse, particularly if your horse is running or rushing from trot to canter. Okay, let's go. Hey there and welcome to the Daily Strides podcast. My name is Lorna Leeson. I'm an equestrian trainer and coach and I love helping riders, yeah, enjoy riding a little bit more. And one of the ways we can do that is by smoothing out that transition from trot to canter so that it's less rushy. Okay, so it's a big one, the transition, because for many riders, canter is so lovely. It really is. It's, it, isn't it just lovely to like spend time in canter? But it's the getting into it, and particularly when your horse is rushing or running, because it tends to make everything just more bouncy and unbalanced and uncoordinated. And it, at the end of the day, feels like you're not sure if you're falling into canter, if you're flying into canter. It's just not that enjoyable. And by the time you get into the canter, you're feeling so flustered and so, if you want, far removed from where you want to actually be and be in like your position, in your aids, in just your mental composure at that moment in time, that the canter itself ends up just also being not as great as it could be. And I think that when we're working with horses, and particularly horses who've been doing this for a little bit of time, okay? I'm not talking about brand spanking new babies or horses that are very green because yes, very often they do tend to run into the canter a little bit on very early on in their training. But once your horse has been at this for, oh, like a month or two or longer, I think that this is a transition that you can improve dramatically in a very short amount of time by just being very, very consistent and also very focused with what you're working on with your horse, okay? Now, I do think that where you're going to start with this is probably not where you want to start, but it's really important to mention that a lot of the times this transition is, it's running because you're not as supple, not as balanced, and maybe coordinated as you could be in order to ride this transition better. So that is where I would suggest starting with. Now, I think many riders, they think that they're riding a mediocre trot. Like, you know, it's not great. It's going nowhere slowly. You know, it's, it's, it's there, okay? <laughs> they're trotting around. They're thinking, this is perfect. I'm brilliant. But that mediocre trot is not the trot that you need to get you into the canter. And what very often happens is as soon as you begin to gather things together in order to prepare for the canter, the fact that there's more energy present means that your lack of suppleness becomes very, very obvious. You see, when things are going kind of meh and it's mediocre and there isn't a lot of energy, it's easy to hide these, maybe these areas in our riding that, you know, are not serving us. But as soon as we put a spotlight on that by putting more energy into the container, the container being you and your horse, that is where these things are going to show up. So it is really important to understand that you could potentially be blocking the energy, okay, through a lack of suppleness. And that is, as I said, causing then a lot of the issues going up, okay? Now, how it normally looks is that the rider becomes very rigid or stiff in the saddle. And what's often funny is that these same riders, they would not have been doing too badly at what they were doing before the thought of the canter crept into their mind and obviously somewhere in there there is a belief that is causing them to feel a little bit more tension okay or whatever the case is their whole body changes and of course the horse picks up on this and then you have this kind of blocking of the energy the blocking of the forwardness so it is really really important to understand that you may be 
what is kind of blocking this. And by you devoting some time to practicing how you respond when you create more energy within the trot, and I would suggest just staying in the trot here, okay, that is going to help you to channel the energy a little bit better. And that's very important to think of channeling the energy rather than holding or controlling it. And that leads me on to the next point that I want to mention here is about the trot and how if you can devote some of your time to actually developing the trot, you are going to find that the transition from the trot into the canter is going to be so much easier going forward, okay? Now, developing the trot, I would look at how rhythmic it is, the space inside of it, how forward it is. Are you and your horse both thinking and moving forward without running? We don't want the running. Let's take the running out. Okay, no running, but just moving and thinking forward together because that is going to allow you to have a more balanced transition then when you go into it. I think with the trot, there can be a tendency to just accept what is there. So when we get onto our horse and we begin trotting, all horses have their own natural rhythm in the trot. And as riders, we can sometimes think that, well, that's it, that's the trot. But you know, you can always positively influence the trot to become a little bit more, a little bit better. Yes, you're going to work with what your horse has, but you can help your horse work more with that, okay? So I think that that's really important. And then what I would do from there is that you can begin to test yourself and test your suppleness by using sitting trot, particularly where you're putting more energy and gathering more energy. So you're developing the quality of the trot. If you find that you're struggling to remain balanced or relaxed, or if your coordination goes for a little bit of a ball every time you go into sitting trot, okay, that would be where you have now a clear indicator that maybe you need to revisit the first thing I mentioned. So your own suppleness, your own fitness, um, your own coordination, all that fun stuff. But use the trot. I would also then suggest working between walk and trot and doing transitions up and down and even putting some halt in there as well because you can then use these slower paced transitions to actually refine what you're doing more and more and to kind of iron out any habits that are creeping in and um, so they would be important and um, so that you could kind of move forward and allow your horse to move forward through the gates without any hindrance from you but I'll chat about that just now okay from there get really clear on exactly what you want now I know you're probably saying but I want to canter well that's marvelous <laughs> but if you just want to canter well then you mustn't complain if your horse just canters eventually at some point okay you need to get really 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 specific like where do you want to canter how do you want it to feel what type of canter are you looking to create when you get there and maybe what is the actual focus for that specific transition if you're thinking about it as being a training aid for either you and your horse okay or your horse and your horse both of you, one of you, whatever, whatever you're working on, okay? But by having this really clear focus, um, you will be able to get more and more, I suppose, accurate and more responsive and more, yeah, you can look for this better outcome each time, okay? Now, again, if you've got a younger horse or a green horse, I would say you can be a little bit more relaxed with having things exactly as you want them. It's not going to be exact, okay? So asking for it is just going to end up frustrating everybody. But if you and your horse are working together a little bit longer, you can really and truly become more specific about what you want. And I like to think of balanced as being a really good outcome to work towards, okay? So you could check the accuracy, the amount of balance, the lightness, and the straightness as well. Straightness is a key point when it comes to the transition between trot and the canter, okay? So let's say you've got all these in place. Now you're going to start riding it, okay? So I would suggest beginning by getting really clear on what you want to make happen and then modeling that for your horse, okay? So whatever you expect your horse to do, 
I want you to do it first. So this could be making sure that you are straight in the saddle, that you're not collapsed one side or the other. This would be ensuring that you are carrying yourself and remaining light, okay? And especially the upper body. We tend to throw our upper body around a lot when we go into canter. I'll chat about that just now. But it is something we do. And then you being accurate with your coordination and your aids and therefore your communication and also also doing it at the right time that you're giving your horse the chance to respond okay so you're allowing him to do all this and then you are also being responsive that when your horse actually says oh okay you want me to canter but you're going to allow him to then do just that okay so many riders they'll work on all the things up to it but then when it comes to the actual there we go into the canter they block the actual thing that they've asked the horse to do. So it's really important that you're actually letting that flow. You're letting your horse to do that. Now, if you feel that within the transition itself, so let's say you're going from the trot, you've developed the trot, you're really, you've, you've kind of established this, what you feel is a good quality trot. Um, it's working, the two of you are working well together and you then begin to kind of transition into this point of the ride where now you're beginning to prepare the transition into the canter, okay? And then you notice that as you're preparing this or when you ask, well, the trot begins to deteriorate. <laughs> it begins to run. What I was saying earlier, the running, okay, you get the running factor. Running basically feels like it's like the horse is just getting faster and faster, longer and longer, and it feels like all the energy is just falling out the front door in front of you, and you're like, hey, not a good feeling, folks, not a good feeling, okay? But when you begin to notice that the quality of the trot is deteriorating, don't keep pushing on through, okay? Now, again, if you've got a very green horse, you can just to get the whole concept across but and again I would be yeah I would be maybe a little bit choosy with regards to when I'm going to push on there and when not but it's really important that if you and your horse have been doing this for any length of time that you are going to get really really picky and choosy regarding what is acceptable when you ask for the canter and what's not and how you would do that is you are just going to whoa steady everything back up here whoa and you're going to re-establish the trot that you're looking for again and then from there thinking about hold on what potentially went wrong there what did I potentially what could I have done differently what did I not do that I could have gotten a different outcome and trying again? Okay, now sometimes it's just that the horse has been doing this for so long, running into the canter from the trot, that it just becomes a habit and that's what he does. And it almost feels to him like, oh, this is like a mission to try and just clean, like transition into the canter. But by you being really, really specific in what you're asking and then correcting the horse timely fashion each time, you are going to really and truly improve this, okay? So I think that that is really important. And then onto what I said about allowing the canter to flow, okay? So there's kind of three parts to the transition. There is the establishing a good quality trot, very important. There's asking for a clean, a timely, balanced, light, beautiful transition, bump into the canter. And then there is allowing the canter to go forwards afterwards. <laughs> okay. And as I mentioned, there can be a tendency for us as riders to want to canter. And I know you're saying exactly that's what we're talking about. Yeah, but we have to, in our heads, begin to at some point say, hold on, I'm asking for the canter. I'm not cantering. It's not my job to canter. It's my job to ask for the canter and then get out of the way and let the horse canter. And that is really important. So if you find that the horse goes into the canter, but then you're blocking it, and what a lot of riders do is they lean, they lean the shoulders towards the horse's inside shoulder. I don't know why, but they do. They kind of lean over the horse. So let's say you're, you're cantering, you're asking for a canter on the left lead. It's like the, their whole body leans to the left, over the left shoulder of the horse, leans forward and over the left shoulder of the horse. And they think that they're somehow helping the horse to canter when actually all they're doing is shutting down the space for that left shoulder to move into and really hindering the horse from cantering at all, okay? So it's important to recognize that 
Once you've asked for the canter, get out of the way and let him canter, okay? And what you might find is that when you do this a few times, okay, and you work on it and you really, really get intentional, you're like, okay, what can I improve? What can I improve? How can I improve it? How can I do this differently? How can I ask differently? How could I communicate this better, okay? And you, you really refine, refine, refine. You are going to be able to see almost instant improvement with regards to what you're doing and how you're doing it. And I really think that that is the really fun and exciting thing about the canter. I think that you can have such a positive influence over your horse in a very short space of time once you get really intentional about what you're doing and how you're doing it. And on that note, I'm going to invite you this September, I'm going to be running a new program all about the canter where I will be helping you do exactly that. Step-by-step -step audio horse riding lessons all about the canter. We're gonna be working on this topic as one of the topics, but so much more inside of the canter itself. If you want to find out all the details, you can pop on over to stridesforsuccess.com forward slash canter. Couldn't be any easier than that. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. I do hope that you have a great week. Keep well, and I'll chat to you soon. Be good. Bye.